everyone. So I wanted to make a video on race realism. And what is that? It's because it's it's been a thing that's being talked about right now, you know, and I've heard a lot of the arguments, all from like Stefan Molyneux and shit like that, and, and some of the arguments make sense, and some of the arguments you go, no, no, no. <laughs> The first arguments, the, the, the arguments that make sense are generally, um, have to do with, like, IQ and culture and, and stuff like that. And, and so you look at, like, different groups of people. You look at, like, sub-Saharan African people. They tend to be more violent because low IQ people tend to be more violent. Now, that's not a race thing, though. I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna start off with that first and foremost, because I'm not a racist. I do not believe that there is inherent genetic qualities within each race that makes one superior over the other. That's not what happens. Sub-Saharan Africans don't have access to fish. That's why they're not as intelligent as, say, the Asians, which live, and the Asians live right on the coastline. Think about the highest IQ people in Asia. Think about the Japanese. What do they eat? They eat a shit ton of fish. They eat sushi. They eat fish raw, you know? And uh, you think about, like, Western Europeans. Why are Western Europeans so intel intelligent? Especially, like, the English. It's because they were out fishing and, and eating fish a lot because they live right on the coastline. That whole, it's an island. Of course they're going to fish. They used to fish the Thames all the time. Fish and chips, it's a big thing. And so, yeah, if you have people who are eating more fish, they tend to be more intelligent. Um, another example of this would be, like, the Greeks, or the Romans, or the Egyptians. Like, think about all these places. Egypt, right on the coast. Rome, right on the coast. Lots and lots of coastline. Um, the Greeks. Greece has a shit ton of coastline around it. So much coastline. You look even into, like, Judea. Like, Jesus was a fisher. Like, or not, not him specifically, but the men that he recruited were fishermen. So they had a lot of fish in their diet. They probably were a little bit more intelligent than maybe the average person who wasn't eating as much fish. And this is a the thing. There's several things that increase the growth of our brains and increase our IQs and intelligence. And having access, access to omega-3s, fatty acids, which are found abundantly in fish, is really, really important to the development of your brain. So, is this a racist thing? Hell, no, no, no. Race realism, I don't, I don't know if you can actually have race realism. You can look at certain groups of people living in certain areas and go, that group of people in particular has a low IQ and, and, and has more aggressive tendencies. And you can look at like some of the reasons why. And I really do believe it has to do with access to fish. I think that if you were going to test like IQs of different groups of people, um, say like back when, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, Native Americans had control of more of the land than they do now, obviously. Um, I don't actually know how many Native Americans were in the United States at the time, but my thought process is the ones on the coast were probably more intelligent than the ones towards the middle of the country, the ones, you know, hunting buffalo and stuff. And and you see, like, those people are a lot more warlike as well, at least from what my understanding of, of history is. You know, you have people with the more, the more open plains area, you know, the, the people are, but, you know, then you have, like, the Indian, there are the Native Americans up in the, the Pacific Northwest, and they ate a lot of, like, salmon and stuff, and I'm sure that those people were more intelligent, and it, it has to do with what your body <clears throat> has available to itself. Now, your body does change. It does, it, your, your genetics change. What is being, um, presented that your phenotype changes based off of um, what's called epigenetics. So what you practice during your lifetime is going to affect the genetics of your children. So for instance, if you want your children to be intelligent, you yourself need to start taking fish oil. My hypothesis is that if you were to take 
a sub a group of sub-Saharan Africans who have a low IQ, say like 70 or something like that, like really low IQ in comparison to like somebody like me, I probably have an IQ of, I'm going to make a guesstimation of probably around 115 or 120. I don't want to overemphasize how intelligent I am, but I do think I'm a, a little bit over the, the 100 range. But 100 is about where you want to be to, to function well in society. Now, that's not to say that, you know, more people who are more intelligent do better either, because I gotta tell you, uh, I'm not doing well at all in my life. But, and you can have, you can have low IQ people who, who, if they work their ass off and they try really hard, they can become very, very, very successful people. So IQ is not even, not even necessarily something, but it's just that there's tendencies. People who are lower IQ tend to be more aggressive because they're not as rational. They don't have as much mental capacity to control their emotions. It, it's very, it's a very easy thing to understand. It's like you wouldn't expect a two-year-old to not throw a tantrum when you take away their toys, you know? They don't have the regulation um, available for them to do that. And it's, it's, it would be the equivalent in someone who either wasn't um, raised to control their emotions, so you think of like the social justice warrior assholes, or they have too much of a low IQ to understand how to regulate their emotions in a proper way, and so it makes them more aggressive. Um, you can have a big, strong, tall, uh, very masculine, lots of testosterone, but if he's got a brain and he can think logically, and I say he because men are bigger and they have more testosterone and they tend to have more muscles. You could have the biggest fucking guy in the world with the biggest giantest muscles. And, you know, he could choose not to be aggressive because he has a mental ca capacity to do that. So my hypothesis would be if you took a group of sub-Saharan Africans and you gave them um, vitamin supplements, um, fish oil supplements, you increase their fish in their diet, and, and you, 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 you gave them proper nutrition, you would see within a few generations that they would have, start to have higher IQs. You also have to change their environment. Another reason I think that, like, the Asians and the Western Europeans and the Greeks and the Romans, why were they all so intelligent? It's because they were fishing. And and how do you how do you become really good at fishing? Well, you need a boat. So you have to learn how to create a boat for to to be able to go out onto the sea. It, it creates a situation where you have to do more problem solving. The Chinese had boats. The Japanese had boats. You know, lots and lots of boats over in, in the Asian countries. And then you come over to Western European. Lots and lots of boats over there, too. We had to figure out how to make boats. I think one of the driving factors of our intelligence was that we needed to learn how to make boats in order to go fishing. So that we could get more of what we were, what our diet was consisting of. You know? Like, 2,000 years ago, what were they doing? They were fishing for... They were out in their boats on the Aegean Sea, or wherever the fuck they were. Oh, Galilee, the Sea of Galilee, sorry. <laughs> um, but they were out on their boats, casting their nets, <coughs> trying to get their food source. <clears throat> to me, this just makes sense. Knowing what I know about epigenetics, knowing what I know about, you know, how, how our genetics actually works, how our DNA works, and how it folds and unfolds and locks into place and unlocks based off of the environment and what you do, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so, talk about this point, because when you think about it this way, when you think about the cultural influences, when you think about the 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 environmental influences, you can start to see how, okay, yeah, yeah, people on the coastlines 
who are out fishing and stuff, it, it, you know, and you have to have waters that are able for you to fish. So maybe like certain areas along the coastline of like Africa, for instance, are not good places to fish because you can't get a boat out there. It's too rough of water or something. You can't have areas like that. <clears throat> so you go to Sub-Saharan Africa where they hunt, <clears throat> you know, um, plain animals or whatever. Well, it doesn't take as much intelligence to fix a, fix a rock into a spear and attach it to a stick, you know, sharp point, attach it to a stick to make a spear and, and hunt and, and, and chase something. It doesn't take as much intelligence as learning how to rig up a sail, learning how to put wood together in a way, or learning how to carve out um, tree trunks, you know, uh, that's one way to make a canoe, is to carve out a tree trunk. I, 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 I get the impression that they probably had canoes on the west coast and the Pacific Northwest, but I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't take my word for it. I do know that they did a lot of fishing, though. And they would, they would eat the salmon, so it would not surprise me if they were more intelligent. It just wouldn't. You know, figuring out how to make something float on water that's also going to hold yourself and whatever fish you catch, that takes a lot of, of problem solving and thinking. And these things don't just develop overnight. It's not like you go from, hmm, I need to get out into the middle of water and, and be able to... Uh, go fish for things. And, uh, no, it doesn't happen overnight. You don't go from, huh, how do I get the fish out of the water that are, like, way out there, because I know they're out there, to having a, a, a big boat with a, a sail, or not even a big boat, but, a, like, maybe a small boat and, like, a fishing pole. Like, that takes a lot that takes a lot of problem solving and it happens slowly. You, it's a slow process. First you go out into the water and you start fishing because, with your hands. And then you realize, oh, if I take a spear out with me, I can stab at the fish. And then you start to mess with the spears and stuff. And you go, oh, if I do a three-pronged spear, and if you ever see this, you can... A three-pronged spear is better at catching fish underwater. And so you start doing that, right? Well, then you start to think to yourself, well, wouldn't it be easier if I could just scoop all these fish up? So maybe at that point you start, you 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 learn how to make a net. Now what, what is this net going to do? Okay, maybe you can throw it into the water off of a cliff or something or, you know, high spot where there's water right there. But wouldn't it be easier if you could just get out more towards the middle of the water? So you start figuring out, oh, well, well, what's going to float? Well, you find out that wood floats and certain woods float on water. So you start to create uh, something that can hold you. And, and it, it's going to be, the first boats would have been really, really, really simple. But as time gone on, and these people continued to practice boat building and net making and 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 I, I believe you know you go from nets to rope to to rigging to canvas you know um mass and stuff like that it's a slow process but you can see how creating a giant ship like they they had in like ancient greece and ancient roman times and you had like the aegeans and the Minoans and all these other advanced civilizations, you can see how that would take more brain power to accomplish than just chasing down some sort of herd animal in the middle of the the the, safa the, the savanna. You know what I mean? There's a big difference in, in terms of how their brains are being used. So if you were to take a sub-Saharan African group and put them along the, like, like, take the people out of Greece. Imagine Greece is just empty, but it's got a shit ton of islands all over the place. Put those people in Greece. They're going to figure out, oh, we can eat the fish. And they will eventually, I believe, develop ships and boats and stuff like that. They're, because they're smart enough to do it. 
They just have to have a prompt. They have to have a trigger for 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 the development of their brains, you know? You have to actively use your brain in order for your children to be as intelligent or more intelligent than you. It's really, really important. So why why did I want to talk about race realism specifically today, other than, you know, the rage after the storm thing and um, <clears throat> so on and so forth? It's 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 one of those things where it's like she has a point, the people against her have a, have points or whatever, but I don't think anybody has got the right picture. I think I do. I think m the way that I approach it is the least like racist. I think it makes the most sense. It makes the most sense for for how um, you know. You look at the advanced civilizations, they're always along the coast. They're never, like, they're almost never inland. And if they are, it, it you know, it, that's really impressive, you know? Um, and, you know, agricultural, those people probably have a little bit bigger brains, too, just because they have more access to food. And, and if you store food all night, all winter, you have access to food. You have better nutrition. Um, I still don't think the people who would be, like, people who did agriculture would probably not be as intelligent as the people who actually created, like, ships and stuff. This is why you get variability within the IQ spectrum and stuff like that. It's because... Of our ancestors, your specific ancestors. My dad's a fairly intelligent man, and uh, throughout his lifetime, he has tried to improve upon herself. My mother was also a fairly intelligent person, um, and through her lifetime, she improved upon herself. They both went to college. I had no problem with college, okay? Like, college was fairly easy for me, you know? Um, I, I have a decent IQ. I I made it through college, no problem. You know what I mean? But if I had two parents who hadn't gone to college, odds are it would have been a lot harder for me in college, you know? And and that's not a racial thing. It is not a racial thing. The last thing I want to mention was uh, I was watching an Andy Worski video, and he was reading this article by this feminist... And she was essentially calling for white women to abort their babies. Now, I think I've laid out pretty well how higher IQs form, okay? <laughs> There's no reason to abort white babies. White babies aren't any different from black babies. The only difference genetically has to do with the history of their specific ancestors. If your specific ancestors were in a position where they had to use their brains a lot and they had access to good resources and nutrients and like fish and stuff, you're going to be more intelligent. So it's absolutely fucking disgusting to look at one group of people and say they should be genocided because this is what this woman's calling for. She was basically saying that if you give birth to a white baby, you are promoting white supremacy. No, no, you're not. You're just living your life. Women, women, go have as many babies as you want. Don't let anybody tell you how many children you can have and don't kill your children because of racism. Please don't do that. Because that's what this woman is. Whoever the fuck this woman is, who, who, and you guys can go check out the video on Andy Warsky's uh, channel. Channel He just posted it um, today, the 3rd of July, 2017. And, uh, but it's absolutely disgusting. It's, she, she, her, her explanation as to why white women should abort their children is essentially that women, that white people are white supremacists and that the family, the white family unit is a micro fiefdom. <laughs> what the fuck is this? No, you dumb shit. Look. Yeah. Okay. I'm more intelligent than you, obviously, because you're, you're fucking retard if you think this is true.
but that's because of my ancestors. Not that your ancestors obviously were not as intelligent. They didn't try to work with their brains as much. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you are so upset about your ancestors not doing the, the, the things that lead you to an higher IQ. And I'm sorry that white people came along and after figuring out how to build giant fucking ships, they came along and they're like, hey, this is how you smell iron. Shit, we made steel. Look at these giant buildings. Ah! Come on, people. Like, like, anybody, any culture, any civilization has the potential to get to where we are. It has nothing to do with race. It has to do with how your ancestors used their brain. And here's the thing. If you're going to use your brain to just feel like a victim, guess what? You're going to impart that feeling of victimhood onto your children. And you're going to make your children feel anxious and, and, and... They're not going to know how to survive in the world. It, it makes no point. If you're relying on another race completely dying out, killing themselves off for your benefit, you are going to fail at life. And you know what? Black women, women of color, I don't think I need to tell the Asian women this because they tend to like marry white men and do really well for themselves. You know, Asian people are really hard workers too. They come over here, they're like, ha ha ha, look at all the white people, we're gonna steal your money. And we like the Asians because we're like, ha ha ha, we get yummy food. <laughs> it's a symbiotic relationship between the two, you know, ethnic cultures or whatever. And they're more compatible because we don't we don't actually hate each other and we're higher IQ. We know how to regulate this is this is why white people and Asians get along so fucking well. I love Asians. I think Asians are great. I think Asians should be fucking everywhere. I think if you go out and talk about supremacy, it's Asian supremacy. I gotta be I'm gonna be honest. Because you take an Asian doesn't matter, male or female, you breed it with a white person, you're gonna get an Asian baby. I, I, it's just the thing. You breed an Asian with a Jamaican, like a black Jamaican, you're gonna get an Asian baby. It's just what's gonna happen. Now, 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 I would never actually date an Asian. I would date a half Asian, though. And I, I say this because I have preferences about, preferences about the size of the male and, and Asian men tend to be a little smaller so if you get them like someone who's half and half they tend to be a bit taller and a little bit bigger more muscly and stuff like that and that's just a personal preference thing that's not a racism thing you dumb fucks but race, but but you know like the Asians they come over they're higher IQ they go into business and and they work with Americans and, and they, they make their living off of Americans coming in and, and buying their shitty Americanized Chinese food. <laughs> and they make a good living off of it. They're happy to do it. They're happy to make a living. They're happy to have the opportunity to be here. It just shows them being higher IQ. So, so actually, I don't believe in white supremacy. I believe in Asian supremacy. Okay, so let's let's get that straight. Okay, <clears throat> I don't know. Hearing somebody believe that they want white women to just kill their white babies because of white supremacy when white supremacy doesn't even exist. When it's all it's you want to know what it is? It's IQ supremacy. If you want supremacy over other people, take fish oil. Educate yourself actively work your brain. Try to solve problems. Because if you do that, you're going to end up with small, smarter children. And eventually, down the line, if you focus on increasing your own intelligence and thereby the intelligence of your children, you're going to get to a point where your children are super smart. And they're going to be able to create the type of culture that white people have been able to create. Look at, like, the Japanese. It's not a white thing. 
<laughs> you know, like, the Japanese saw the type of buildings and shit that we had over here, and they go, that's a great idea. Then they built Tokyo. We destroyed their country, and then they built Tokyo. Because they have higher IQs. It's not a white thing. It is really not. And the Japanese were super, like, supremacist when, when, during, like, World War, you know, two or something, you know, they, they wanted to go out and conquer. It was the Japan, Japanese empire, the empire of the rising sun. This was the thing. They were in China. They were taking over large pieces of land. That's what was happening. It's not a white person thing. It really isn't. It's just that we happen to, at this moment in, in particular, like, time, we happen to be more intelligent than, like, the sub-Saharan Africans who, who haven't had the same historical and cultural and, and environmental backgrounds as us. Being white doesn't make me evil. Being white means that my skin tone happens to be of a paler complexion than you. My facial structure is a little bit different. My, my bone structure might be a little bit different. And my brain is a little bit more intelligent because whoever my ancestors were ate fish, problem solved. Not even, I know for a fact that I had one ancestor, uh, Wilhelm Marx, who came over off of, and he was a sailor, for about 12 years. You, you, you got to think of that. He, now, he came over to the United States and, and married uh, Karen Hornberg. And uh, they had children, but they were poor as shit. They were poor as shit. But you know, he, he was not unintelligent. He, obviously, you, you got to work on a ship. You, you have to work with the rigging and, and all that stuff. Problem solve. That was the beginning, though. And, and there's variations within each family as well. My father, coming out of that, you know, he came out of, like, my grandfather lived in extreme poverty, okay? Extreme poverty. And when he, he actively tried to make his life better, he tried to actively make the life of his children better, and as a result, you have, you have even variations within the family, and Half of the kids are not actually his. So, <clears throat> but like, for instance, like my father. My father is what I would consider rich now. And it's only been recently that I would consider him rich. And, and the reason why is because he's been intelligent about the way he's invested the, his money. He started in a one-story house. One-story house. The, the, the house my grandparents had. One story three bedrooms, three or four bedrooms, and there were the parents and, like, five kids. <laughs> and and that, was a, that was a poor family, okay? They were, not, they were not well off. No, they were not. They went to the lake for their vacations. They didn't go to the beach. They didn't fly to Thailand. They didn't go to the Bahamas. They didn't go to uh, Florida, to the Keys. No, they went to the lake nearby, and, and they, they, they had a shitty little boat that I think sank at some point while in the middle of them riding it. Like, that's where they were at. And now my father is quote-unquote rich. He doesn't have all the toys that he wants. He's, he's, he's not, he, but he lives in a lifestyle where you would look at what he has and go, yeah, yeah, that's, that's rich, you know, especially... If you look at what, what they have compared to, like, what they would have in a third world country, my parents are rich. Yeah, I'm very, very, very privileged. I'm lucky to be living here. I, I gotta tell you, you know, I walk by, like, especially in my own garden updates. I always walk by the river. I'm like, you guys should be so jelly. And the, the thing is, it's like, I know I'm blessed. I know I'm privileged. And I say it as a joke. And, and here's the thing. You all... Every single one of you could work your way up to that if you're smart about it, if you think about it, if you try to, if you work hard, if you have determination, if you have a goal, if you have motivation, if you have something you're moving towards. 
you can do it too. It does not matter what race you are. It does not matter what gender you are. <sighs> Speaking about the gender thing, by the way. <clears throat> so, going off of this whole idea that our genetics changed by our behaviors. Well, the genetics of our culture is changing. Women, women who have, I think, lived in the United States or had, um, you know, women in in their background who've who've worked really hard and 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 tried to advance themselves and stuff like that and and you know i don't like to bring up feminism because i'm not personally a feminist but at a certain point it was necessary um there was a particular point in time where women were not um regularly speaking out in public and um you know, it was one of those things where it's like, we haven't ever done this before. We're still trying to learn. And this is an argument that one a, a feminist that I actually like me was that, and, and this is from history chat, a class that I remember that line, that there, there was a line that had been taught in history class where it was talking about women talking about getting up and speaking about i think it was maybe the right to vote or something like that or or no it was the abolitionists so there was a lot of female abolitionists who felt very strongly about abolition and so when they first started to talk you know the men weren't very respectful because they were used to other men and <laughs> talking, you know, big, loud, and confident, and whatnot, and the women were not. They were more mild, more meek, because they hadn't been in the political spectrum. Now you see, there's more and more women who are more and more comfortable coming out and speaking in public and, and stuff like that. And it's not just, it is not just, um, a cultural thing. I really do think it's a genetic thing, where we have had points in time where women have tried to progress themselves and and the more you know it's like if you were to have a mother who's a successful business person you're more likely to be able to be successful in business as well as a female and and because we're dimorphic species we are sexually dimorphic i'm sorry if that offends people but it's the truth we have two there's a reason it's because that's what we need to reproduce <laughs> you have to have a positive and a negative to reproduce and create a new child and i don't care what you call the positive or the negative but you have to have this and you have to have <laughs> you have to have that that's what you have to have. We're talking penis and vagina. If you don't like penis and vagina, fuck off. That's all we got. <laughs> you want to bitch about intersex? I'm sorry. Um, how is an intersex person necessarily going to reproduce? I mean, maybe some of them can, like, say, if one of them has a womb, but if you don't have a vagina, how can you push the baby out or even get... Anyway. <sighs> Lots of stuff there. But it... <sighs> The point is, is like, we have to practice what we want our future generations to be like. And one of the things I worry about, especially with race realism and then the racism that you get coming out of the SJW side, is that we're practicing racism. We're practicing exclusionary sort of um, behaviors. We're practicing, you know, tribalism. We're not uniting as a culture, as one people under, you know, one ideology that is, you know, freedom and, and, and our democratic republic. I'm not going to say democracy because a full democracy would be tyrannical in and of itself in some regards as well. So you have to have a balance. That's why we have a republic, a democratic republic, where we elect our representatives and then the representatives make the laws. So, yeah. But we have to be able to come together and live together and work together and, and interact with each other in a non-violent, non-aggressive ways. And that's the best way for our society to be. And so by practicing this race realism and this racism by saying, oh, white women should abort their babies, you're practicing 
bigotry. You're pa practicing racism. I'm not a racist. And, and you know why? My dad's not a racist. And you know why my dad's not a racist? One of the reasons is because he's been so exposed to so many different cultures. Why do you think I like Asian people so much? It's because I have an aunt who's Asian. It's because I have aunts who are um, Filipino. Um, I know it's Asian, but I have an aunt who's Korean. I have two aunts who are Filipino. And then my father would go over to South Korea and Japan and Thailand and his military career all the time. And he would come back and he'd be like, Saudi cop or Saudi ka, sabaydi mai. Uh, which is something in Thailand. Thai. Um, or kum kum ka, kum kum kat. I don't know. It, 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 it's different based off of whether you're male or female. It's funny. This is, this is something else I find funny is that, you know, you talk about like gender and, and stuff. You got like other cultures which are more heavily on um, you know, male, female, you know, pronouns or what you're supposed to use when you're, when you're actually speaking. Like, I think it's, <clears throat> kam kum kap, kap is, I think, what male say, and then kam kum ka is what female say. And so there's a difference, like, in Thai in that way. And we don't have those sorts of language differences. We just have uh, certain pronouns which, you know, aren't even really used when you're talking to an individual. Unless you're like, ma'am or sir, certain ones like that. That's, but that's always just a perceptual inference. And that shouldn't be taken seriously. Your personal, by the way, your personal pronoun is your name, Okay. Okay, if you want a personal pronoun and you and you don't like what people are calling you, change your name. Okay, change it's it's as simple as that. You can express yourself as much as you want through your name. Name yourself Chewbacca. I don't fucking care. Name yourself Gay Boy. I don't fucking care. But but don't uh, impose upon other people that they have to guess what your preferred pronoun when. Language is just inference as to observation. You know, if I can tell that you're a, a trans person and you, you are attempting to look like that sex, a lot of times I, I can make the inference and go, this person wants to be preferred to be called a, a she. But if you walk up to me and I can't tell if you're a male or a female and I go, hey, sir, can I help you? You know, say if I was working at a store or something. I mean, it would be ridiculous to get angry at me, because I can't tell. It's just an inference, you know? It's not me trying to... Anyway, anyway. The point is, is that we, we want to practice what we want to happen in the future. That's, that's what it is. And this is regardless of what gender you are. If you want your, your, your female uh, girls to be strong, independent women... Go marry a strong, independent businesswoman or whatever. Or, you know, just encourage them. You can, a lot of it can be encouragement too. You can teach, and people have such a big capacity to learn. Like, you can't underestimate that, especially if they have a high IQ. Like, I have a capacity to learn. I have major anxiety problems. I have never pictured myself being like a business person in the past. I've never pictured myself um, being competitive in the past. But as I think about it, and I think about what I want for my future, and I look at what my father has done with his life and how he's invested in his money so well, I think to myself, hey, maybe owning some businesses would be a good idea. Maybe investing in land would be a really good idea. So how do I get there? See, I can teach myself that. I have the capacity to learn, and you have the capacity to learn, too. And that's the thing. This racism, this race realism, it does nothing but hold people back. What you need to tell people is that there are certain things you want to do if you want an intelligent child. Fish oil, practice your own problem-solving skills. It, it doesn't have to even be, like, big, complicated things. Like, I'm going to figure out... The real reality 
of nature and, and the universe and all that. It doesn't have to be that. It could just be doing crossword puzzles. A lot of my, my family in the past, um, that was a big thing. Like, I remember my grandfather on my mother's side doing uh, crossword puzzles all the time. And, you know, it was probably one of the factors to let my mother be an intelligent. And it's probably one of the factors to lead to me being intelligent and having really good, I like, Oh my god, I cannot tell you how much I love logic problems. You know, like those logic problems where you get like a list of um, clues or whatever and then you have like a grid and you, you get to fill it out and stuff. Oh, I love those so much. I'm so good at those. And and I think it just comes from the, 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 the history of like my my grandfather being in the, um, my dad, on my dad's side, he was in the Army Air Corps, and he was a mechanic, and so he had to problem solve a lot with the, with the mechanics, and then when he came home, he had an auto body shop, and he worked at the mill and stuff like that, and he was always using his brain, and when he wasn't at the auto body shop that he, he, I think he was partners with maybe his brother or something, or somebody else, and and he wasn't at the, the mill, he was out in his own garage fixing things and, and problem solving and stuff. And my dad, my dad, he is the happiest. He is the most happiest when he is sitting there working on a problem, problem solving. It is when he is at his happiest. And so I'm going to leave you guys with that. Uh... If you want to improve your future generations, you need to practice what you want to see in the future. If you want white supremacy to be gone, you need to stop making white people feel like they're the enemy. Okay? You're practicing something that's going to make more people than just... It's going to affect more people than just you. When I hear something along the lines of... White women should go abort their babies. You know what that makes me want to do? It makes me want to have 12 of the whitest babies you have ever seen in your life. It makes me angry. Some of the stuff in the past has made me very, very angry towards colored people. Not Asians, because I love Asians. But the, the rest of them that, that complain and they bitch and they whine and, and they complain. I had to have space and time and, and the recognition that we are all individuals, that those assholes are not representative of an entire race of people, just as the few people, the few, few people who actually own slaves in the South, the few, few, few slave owners are not representative of the rest of white people, especially now we pass that. I didn't come from the South at all. You know, I, I have no, no connection to that. My family was up in Iowa, uh, Nebraska for the other side. No slaves there. I tell you, you know, the, the Iowa is not part of the South. Okay. It's part of the Northern States. And Missouri, I think was either right above or right below the um, parallel line, but I only live there for like two years when I was a kid. What I'm saying is my families were, were not from the South. They're from Northern states where slavery was illegal. So to call me a racist or the, uh, you know, the descendant of a slave owner would be absolutely ridiculous. To blame me for something that other white people who had nothing to do with me did is very, very racist. And you're just gonna make racist babies. Me, I think I should have 12 children, you know, because I've gone through it. I've, I've looked at the race realism stuff. I've look at, I look at the racism stuff. I hear all of it. I, I hear the, every single thing. And I, here's what I've found. Whenever I go tribalist, there is always somebody who proves me wrong. And I love it so much. I felt tribalism in regards to the Muslims. Because it makes me very, very, very angry that children, young girls, are, are being blown up at Ariana Grande concerts. Not that I like Ariana Grande, 
but young children should not be getting blown up. It makes me angry. But then I come across somebody like Imam Tawahidi and it makes my heart like leap for joy because he's sane, because he's wonderful, because because like when I watch him, He's telling me the truth about the, the Bukhari and the Hadiths and the, the Quran. And he's like, yeah, they're violent books. We need to throw out the Bukhari. We need to throw out the Hadiths. Let's focus on the Quran and, ref, ref, and have a reformation of the religion to make it less violent. And just look at the violent passages in the Quran in historical contexts, like you would look at certain verses in the Bible. We had a reformation and here in, in the Christendom. We've had several, okay? And I don't think I can underemphasize that enough either. We have successfully de-weaponized Christianity. Islam has not done that yet. That's what a reformation is. A reformation of religion is a de-weaponization of religion. And that's what to, uh, Imam Tawahidi is calling for. He is calling for a reformation. He's calling for the de-weaponization of Islam. And that makes my heart so happy to find a Muslim who is actually peaceful, who's actually going to tell you the truth about the Quran, and is actually fighting for something good. He's the type of man that, that you know, Muslims need to follow. And I love being proved wrong. I love my tribalism being proved wrong. It makes me a better person. But you know what? I'm open to it. I'm open to other opinions. I'm open to hearing a feminist who I, I listen to and I go, that's a feminist I can I can respect. That's a feminist I can actually agree with. Oh, that's a feminist who makes a good point for why we need feminists. Holy shit! I had that moment like just yesterday listening to a feminist. But she's a sane feminist. She's a... Oh, I can't remember her name off the top of my head. She's redhead. Um, but she has talked to Sargon of Akkad before, and her, her whole argument for feminism is she's experienced sexism, and so she knows it's real. But she's also sane about it. She's not, like, after Princess Peach. She's not after, uh, you know, all these different characters. She understands that her own trauma in the past has affected her own perceptions of things and stuff like that, so she's a lot more even-headed. If there's feminists like that out there, I love them. I want more of them. I want all of them to be like that. And I love breaking out of the tribalism. That's what race realism is. It boils down to tribalism. You can change the entire genetic makeup of a people by putting them in a different environment. Okay? I think I think you can tell that. You know, the, the African Americans here do not look the same as Africans... In, in the sub sub saharan and stuff like that, okay? So, those are my thoughts on race realism. Those are my thoughts, a little bit on gender and, and so on, and religion and such on. But, mostly race realism, and it's a big part of its tribalism, and I think it's, I don't think it's a uh, healthy, I don't think it's a good thing, I think this is an important conversation to have, and I think at that point, you, you should go, so, we have sub-Saharan Africans who have a low IQ, so what can we do to help them raise their IQs so that they can be more successful? That's where I think we need to go with race realism. I think race realism should just be put out the door and you go, okay, let's go with cultural realism. Let's go with group realism. Let's look at specific groups of people. Let's look at specific individuals and let's go, okay, what would raise their IQ? What would make them less violent? That's where the, the, the whole argument needs to be because you can change the, the genetics through epigenetics, through your behavior. You practice hate, that's what you're going to create. If you practice love, that's what you're going to get. And I don't mean love in the 
the the high blah blah blah, blah. Oh, it's all about love, love love you know where it doesn't really do anything i'm talking about real love you know the, the type of love that gets in your face and goes no honey you can't be a racist this isn't a good move for you this is going to take you down the wrong path okay real love comes at you and it tells you the things that you don't want to hear but the things that you need to hear so that you can improve upon yourself that's what real love is love is confronting somebody even though you know it's going to piss them off and i'm gonna leave you guys with that thought i hope you have a fantastic day i have to go make dinner now good night